Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers demand meticulous maintenance to maintain their operational capabilities. This intricate process falls under two broad categories. Routine maintenance, conducted daily, weekly, or monthly, addresses minor issues and prevents the escalation of problems. In contrast, depot-level maintenance takes place at specialized shipyards. It involves a thorough examination of the carrier systems and components, often requiring the replacement of worn parts, repairing damaged systems, and implementing technological advancements. Dry docked aircraft carrier maintenance is a crucial aspect of ensuring these massive warships like the Enterprise remain operational and combat ready. Large dry docks, capable of accommodating the immense size of carriers, provide a controlled environment for extensive repairs, modifications, and upgrades. Prior to entering the dry dock, the aircraft carrier undergoes a thorough preparation process, including defueling, equipment removal, hull cleaning, and tugboat assistance to position the boat in the dry dock. Once inside the dry dock, the carrier undergoes a comprehensive maintenance process, encompassing various aspects such as hull inspection, anti-corrosion measures, propulsion system overhaul, electronic system upgrade, and crew facilities renovation. During routine dry dock maintenance periods, Nimitz-class carrier propellers undergo comprehensive overhauls involving a complete disassembly of the propellers, followed by thorough cleaning, inspection, and repair or replacement of worn or damaged parts. This helps maintain the propeller's smooth surfaces, reducing drag and ensuring efficient propulsion. Before reinstallation, the propellers undergo rigorous calibration and balancing procedures. This ensures they rotate smoothly and efficiently, minimizing vibration and reducing noise. Aircraft carrier painting is a critical aspect of maintaining these massive warships' operational capabilities. Paint protects the ship's surface from corrosion, erosion, and the harsh marine environment, ensuring its structural integrity and extending its lifespan. Sensitive areas such as electrical components and control surfaces are masked off to prevent paint from entering and causing damage. The base coat, typically a primer or anti-corrosion paint, is applied to provide a solid foundation for the top coat, determining the ship's color scheme. Repurposing an anchor from one aircraft carrier to another is a complex and carefully executed process involving meticulous planning, specialized equipment, and a skilled team of technicians. The anchor is prepared for installation by applying anti-corrosion coatings and paint to protect it from the marine environment. This includes applying a base coat multiple top coats, and anti-fouling paint. Specialized equipment is used to collect and dispose of overspray, preventing environmental contamination.
The process of loading an anchor onto an aircraft carrier involves careful planning, precision maneuvering, and the use of specialized equipment. The anchor is securely fastened, lifted by a powerful winch. Aligned with the anchor hose pipe and attached to the anchor chain and hull using shackles and pins. And now, as we raise the port anchor today, we're actually operating our equipment for the first time in a year. And that's really great for us as a crew as we become more operational. The fact that these anchors came off of a ship that was my first carrier, my first tour, is sort of great. Regular washing of anchor chains is crucial for maintaining their integrity and preventing corrosion. Hey! Two primary methods are commonly used for washing anchor chains. Either using high pressure water jets to blast away debris from the chain links or a method using specialized chemicals to dissolve barnacles and marine growth. A clean anchor chain is then deployed through the hose pipe, a cylindrical opening in the hull, and the anchor is lowered into the water. Rope heaving is a technique commonly used in maritime operations to transfer objects between ships or to shore. It involves using a long, light rope with a weighted end and a throwing stick or pole to effectively aim and throw the rope, ensuring it lands accurately and securely on the target. The rope is then retrieved by tying it to a secure anchor point, grasping the marker buoy and slowly reeling it in. A ship's arrival at the dock marks the beginning of a complex and demanding process known as refueling complex overhaul. Upon docking, the USS John C. Stennis is carefully secured in place to prevent any movement during the extensive overhaul process. The ship's crew meticulously decommissions and removes all aircraft from the flight deck, allowing for access to the lower levels of the ship. During the RCOH, the flight deck becomes an obstacle to the overhaul team. To facilitate access to the lower levels, the flight deck is meticulously removed piece by piece. This involves cutting, lifting and transporting the heavy flight deck panels to a designated storage area. Removing the rudder a massive 48-ton component is a crucial step in the RCOH process, allowing the overhaul team to access and work on critical systems below the waterline. If necessary, the rudder assembly is carefully separated from the ship's hull using hydraulic cutting tools and precise maneuvering. The team maintains strict control over the separation process to ensure the rudder remains intact and undamaged. Then, as part of the RCOH, a new 123-foot mast is installed, marking a significant upgrade to the USS John C. Stennis' communications and aviation capabilities. The 50-ton aft end section, including bulkhead and deck sections, is removed to accommodate such a component. 
Using specialized cranes and precise maneuvering, the aft section is carefully lifted from the water and transported to a designated work area. The operation involves carefully disassembling the section and ensuring the structural integrity of the remaining hull. The sponson unit, a critical component of the USS John C. Stennis' hull, provides essential support for various systems and functions, including mounting weaponry. During the RCOH process, the sponson unit undergoes a comprehensive replacement to ensure its continued functionality and reliability. In preparation for the new sponson unit's installation, the designated mounting point on the ship's hull is carefully prepared. The surrounding area is decontaminated to maintain cleanliness and prevent contamination of the new unit. Once the mounting point is ready, the prefabricated sponson unit is precisely aligned and secured to ensure proper positioning and alignment with the ship structure. The 16-ton upper-level portion of the USS John C. Stennis is lifted using a specialized lift system designed to handle heavy loads and ensure precise positioning. The operation involves meticulous planning, careful execution, and the use of advanced equipment. Prior to lifting, the upper level portion is secured to the ship's superstructure using specialized rigging and connection points. This ensures the structure remains stable and intact during the lifting operation. High capacity cranes and precise control mechanisms carefully lift the upper level portion, gradually raising it off of the ship's deck. Once the upper level portion reaches the designated mounting point, it is carefully secured using high strength bolts and specialized anchoring mechanisms. Then the new 81.9 ton radar tower is lifted and installed using the same specialized lift system employed for the upper level portion. The radar tower is carefully secured to the lift and transported to the mounting point on the ship's superstructure. The removal of the propellers on USS John C. Stennis for the ship's RCOH required a delicate and precise operation. Newport News shipbuilding employees devised a unique rigging fixture to simplify and enhance the propeller removal process. A new rigging fixture, developed in collaboration with shipbuilders at Norfolk Naval Shipyard, effectively transferred the weight of the propellers from the ship's structure to the lift cranes. This innovative approach minimized the strain on the ship's superstructure and eliminated the need for extensive scaffolding or temporary supports. Finally, the 49-ton rudder was carefully lowered into the dry dock and positioned into place. The precise maneuvering ensured the rudder aligned correctly with the ship's hull and was securely attached. The 27-foot-long rudder stock, weighing approximately 20 tons, was then carefully lowered into the dry dock through various layers of the aircraft carrier. The rudder stock extends deep into the ship's structure, providing a strong foundation for the rudder's operation. Ultimately, 
This journey of a comprehensive overhaul every 25 years is to ensure the continued operational readiness and effectiveness of aircraft carriers and critical naval vessels. Not only does it involve meticulous inspections and repairs, but it also modernizes various systems and components, extending the lifespan of the carriers and, realistically, enhancing their capabilities for another 25 years. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.